Good Rising Tribe, SRC. We are excited to bring you the third episode of The Power of Human Connectivity. We also welcome our guests. We are excited to have you back with us again. Have something to say? Want to ask a question? Please raise your hand. We will call on you. Then you can unmute your mic and engage in the conversation. Now, I want you to take a moment. And you know this is going to be very important. Take a moment. Send to your friends and your family the same link that you use to connect to this live broadcast. Because you already know it's going to be so good. Now, let me say this. All I can say about our last week broadcast is that it was excellent. I can just say, wow, man, we had an excellent exchange of ideals. We discussed that even though our energy is split, it exists as and exists as individuals, we remain connected. So let me say that again. We discussed that even though our energy is split and exists as individuals, we remain connected, even as our thoughts connect with the universe. Now, if you missed last week's episode two, set yourself a reminder to review it on YouTube. And when you get to YouTube and you review it, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Now today, our SRC masterminds are going to unpack the question of, do we recognize our mirrors? Do we recognize our mirrors? But before we get started, when our audience commun communicates with us about something they want to see, we and they want to and they want to see this because it helps them to understand, then we want to accommodate them when we can. So we were sent several messages from our audience to, it said that they'd like us to share the Bible scriptures that help them to understand what we are talking about. And because we are shifting religious concepts, you know, that means that, you know, we are letting people understand how religion and uh, science and all these things work together along with your mind. We wanted to make sure that we include Bible scriptures in our unpacking. And so before I ask Mark Thomas to share the scriptures found uh, in Matthew 7, uh, chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, in Matthew verse uh, chapter 12, verses 36 and 37, I will share a passage with you that was that is in the gospel of Thomas. And this passage says, recognize what is in your sight and that which is hidden from you will become plain to you. We want to keep these, this, this, this passage in mind as we start to unpack, do we recognize our mirrors? So now I will pass it on to uh, Mark Thomas to please read those scriptures that we just talked about. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to read, uh, and I'll ask me to read from Matthew, uh, from the book of Matthew, uh, King James Version, and uh, from uh, chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, which in case you don't know, is, is words that are spoken by the character of Jesus in the New Testament in the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, all of these passages will be from that. So uh, I'll just do that. So uh, Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall also be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eyes. So uh, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam that is in thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Okay, and then from Matthew 12, uh, verses uh, uh 37 35 and 36 no 36 and 37 sorry and that reads but i say unto you 
that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be also condemned. Anala? Thank you so much for that. Now keep those passages in mind as we start to break down, unpack our subject matter for today. Now, remember we talked about that we were you know, using the Bible, but we're also using other publications as well. So in a book, The Divine Matrix by Dr. Braden, he said that he met three new people who came into his life very quickly. He said that each of these people became a master teacher for him. Now, let me talk about these three people, and I'm going to describe what Dr. Braden said about the people that came into his life. He said the first person was a woman that he chose to live and work with. He said that that relationship, they argued a lot. I mean, there was, there was, there was no trust there and, and, and it just going, went on and on and on. The second person that came into his life, and remember, these all happened pretty quickly. He said that this relationship was a professional one uh, you know, his business partner. And in this relationship, they really they didn't, couldn't get along as well. It was that the, the person kept uh, undermining what he was trying to do. Uh, then the third person, and I'll go back and explain a, a second to put it all together. Then the third person was a person that he met who, you know, because he traveled a lot. And so he needed a person to stay at his place and do some things around there and do that type of stuff. So they had this kind of personal business relationship at the same time. So he allowed this person to move in. This person, he'd come back home, person had not done what they were supposed to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So he had three people in his life and they, and each one of those people, they were causing problems. As, as a matter of fact, what brought everything to a head is he, when he came back from a, on off a business trip, he went to his bank account to get some money out of his account. And his account was empty. There was no money in his account at all. And he, you know, he had to go deal with the, the law and all that type of stuff. But he said he was on his property and he was walking. You know, he went for a long walk, went on hikes because he needed to understand what was going on because all of these things happened to him within a short period of time. So he went out and he started to pray. He touched his heart and he said, you know, what? is the common reflection here uh, that these people are trying to show me. He's asking his heart that. He's asking, he's putting his hand on his our heart and actually meditating and praying as he's walking and saying, what is the common thread? What is going on here? Why is all of this happening to me? He said that his heart responded immediately and, 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 and the responses were coming so quickly that you know some of them just disappeared. But in contrast, some of the other ones stood out clearly. And he said that four words emerged above all others, honesty, integrity, truth, and trust. And he said immediately, he thought to himself, listen, I am trustworthy. I'm honest. I mean, I'm truthful and all those things. And, and, and his heart said, yes, you are. Yes, you are. But there was something else that he said that he had not considered. And he said there was a common thread with all the things that were happening happening to him. So if I want to ask the, the, the panel right now, I want to put a question out there. If Dr. Braden had integrity, he was truthful, he knew he could be trusted, and, and his, even his heart told him that, then what is it? What was the mirror showing him? You know, and when you think of a mirror, when you think of a mirror, think about you looking in the mirror and a mirror is a reflection of yourself. So what was that mirror showing him if he was none of those things that he was experiencing? And I want to put that out there. Uh, uh, let me see if anybody has their, their mic off who wants to respond to that. I see no one's mic is off. Okay, yes, Tamisha Burgess. Thank you. Okay. Oh, grand rising. Yeah, grand rising to you. Yeah. Um, you know, just personally, when you meet 
what we call mirror reflections of ourselves. It could, it's a mirror reflection of all of you, even the parts you keep hidden, right? Um, the parts that you, you know, that we keep what we say hidden in the shadows or hidden in the dark, but it also mirror reflections can show up um, just as proof of what you know you don't want, <laughs> right? I mean, it could teach you, it could continuously teach you and remind you that, see, you knew this person or this thing or this place wasn't for you in the first place. Mm. Right? And we will we'll accept people, places and things um, could be out of habit, could be out of loneliness, could be out of, um, you know, we're all adults here. I mean, for whatever reason. So in Greg Braden's case, he was, he was bringing in, I guess, romantic relationship that were also business relationship. So shoot, you never know. I mean, I want somebody that you want somebody to hold you at night, you, you know, you're feeling whatever, <laughs> so you, you know, you, you, you attract um, based on where you are on all levels, whether that be in the light or in the dark, whether that be from your shadow self or your, you know, your, your enlightened self. I think there's a, there's a huge misconception about being enlightened and thinking that you still will not attract um, the shadow elements of yourself. In mm. other words, we are still light and dark, okay? You're, you're still gonna attract all levels, especially when you are in this enlightened place in your life. You're gonna attract moths to the flame, like a moth to the flame burned by the fire, you know, like Jenna Jackson says. So um, you're still gonna attract it all. As a matter of fact, you are more on the radar to attract everything when you're in a certain energy. When you're at a certain vibration, you attract it all, especially when you're at a certain vibration. So things don't get cut off anymore. As a matter of fact, they've probably heightened um, but they heighten so that it, it, it's a, it's a learning platform for you too, to realize, you know, what you will accept and what you won't anymore. Mm, I love that. I love, I love that. Anybody else want to add on to what Tam Tamisha just mentioned? Kena, were you trying to turn off your mic? Yes. yes Grand Rising. Hello, everyone. I, I've been listening, struggling with my passwords on my computer. Then I jumped on my, my iPhone. But listen, I, I was so excited about this conversation when uh, Anala sent the, the scripture. And first, I'll say um, the reason why I'm so excited about this subject is because I think this is key in human connectivity, right? Once we're able to see ourselves in each other, and not judge that person, but look within to see why is that bothering me? You know, because if, if there's something that you see in someone else that irritates you or frustrates you or, or changes your energy, then that means that that's somewhere within you. And that's the reason that you see that is to self-reflect, is to examine yourself. And once we make those connections and look within, you know, as Jesus said in Luke 17, 21, my all time favorite scripture, if I could only take one from the Bible and never, ever be able to read another one, it would be that one where he says, you know, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So taking those experiences, taking those situations where you're you judge someone or you dislike someone and you don't know why, you know, th those are your opportunities to look at that thing and turn it within like bless that person wish that person well but do your work look within look look within yourself and examine that thing and find that it's within you and, and there's work for you to do with that so i'm just excited i'm very excited <laughs> thank you thank you thank you all right before we move on okay uh pastor archie oh good morning everyone grand rising Top of the morning, whole nine, y'all. Good to see your faces. <laughs> this, this is a good conversation here because it, it, it reminds me of uh, when I was talking about looking in that mirror. You know, a lot of times our meditation, we tend to forget what we're meditating on and, and, and seeking and asking about the ancestors. And, you know, uh, and when something pop up, we will tend to 
pass it out to someone else. Just like a, a lot of times, you know, I, I've noticed with the in church, even before I started preaching, you know, we were quick to say, oh, he talking about them. He, that, that pastor is talking about, he is really reading them. And all the time, you don't realize that there were some things that you uh, were concerned with and, and, and it comes up to show you that, wait a minute, here, here's the answer to your question or here's where you are right now. But we tend to not want to see that image. or under, We don't want to accept that a lot of time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I love those comments. Um, now, when we think about going back and looking at Dr. Braden and even bringing the scriptures in that uh, Mark Thomas read for us this morning, when we're thinking about those things, we, a lot of times we meet people or we encounter things in our life that, as uh, someone mentioned, that we don't even think about as a learning opportunity for us. We think so often that, you know, you get angry, you never stop and take the time to assess what the universe is really teaching you. And I think uh, Tamisha talked about before, a lot of times we, we meet uh, Tyrone, and uh, Tamisha calls him Tyrone. <laughs> I have no idea why she calls him Tyrone, but she calls him Tyrone. You meet Tyrone and you think Tyrone is there to be your lover or your forever or whatever. And then you realize that Tyrone was just sent there to show you that you make quick decisions sometimes or whatever that is. But we, I, I, what, we're, what we're talking about here is looking at that reflection and not just looking at it, but really assessing it. And before you do anything else, it's asking the universe, what are you trying to teach me? What is this teaching moment? And so often we don't do that. Tamisha, you, you have your mic off. For me, I, I question, what was it, what is it within me that still attracts this type of person or people or place where you know, um, okay, so you mentioned Tyrone, just, just, you know, for ladies and for guys too, you know, you attract a, 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 a romantic partner and it, it doesn't work out the way that you thought it would. And so the evaluation isn't, this was a failure. It's more so why did I accept this for myself in the first place? Um, and so, yeah, just that, just evaluating that when you meet anybody in business, you know, why did I accept this job? That's right. That's right. That's right. Why did I meet this person? Why did I accept this thing? All of those things matter. Mark Thomas, I see that you have, uh, you want to add to that comment. I just wanted to take off on what you said and all about, about the moment and how, um, uh, and how uh, Dr. Braden, is, is, was his name Braden or Bradenton? Braden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Braden. Um, how he how he looked at his encounter with these people and he looked at them as being teachers um and that's what he said and i think it's worth noting that you know that that a teacher isn't somebody who necessarily stands up in a classroom or who uh, or is somebody who who has more uh, knowledge than you do but it can be a moment it can be just an experience that you have and these experiences are manifested uh, in our lives because of, because of the way we are. So he, these people came into his life. Basically, he manifested these people and, and they showed him who he was. So that's, to me, that's the mirror. You know. Let me ask you a question now, because Dr. Braden said that he said, hey, I'm not these things. I'm not these things right now. I'm not, this is this, is this moment that I am right now. So why am I seeing these things right now when I'm not any of those things? So is it possible, is it possible that he was manifesting uh, Mark Thomas? Is it possible that he was manifesting something that had happened that he'd already planted over here? And now he was, he was, this was, you know, coming back in his mirror now. Is that possible? Yeah, exactly. I think that's exactly it. Is, you know, we go through our lives and maybe we're not in touch with who we are ourselves. I mean, we, we you have to look in that mirror to, to see if you're if you're a judgmental person, do you know you're a judgmental person? You know, or or do you or or do you think this is just the normal way of being? So uh, I think that uh, you know the, our lives are all about becoming somebody that that's a, a good and better person than you are, right? That's right. 
and, and the scripture says that that uh, that you read this morning it says, "Judge not, that ye be not judged." So now, what what were we taught in church? <laughs> we were taught in church, "Don't judge anybody, don't you know?" Because if so, you're gonna be judged on on judgment day. You know, when you go when you when you stand in that line, you're gonna be judged. So, <laughs> but when we think about what's happening with Dr. Braden here, the story that he showed us, and I'm sure some stories that are in our lives as well, we recognize that it's not someday that you're going to stand in this long, 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 long line and be judged. Really, when you look in the mirror, and we, and we, because we talked about before that God is within us, right? And I think uh, Kenan brought that scripture forward this morning, that the kingdom of God is within us. We know that God is in us. We know that we are. So who's, when you're looking in the mirror, who's doing the judging? We're judging ourselves based on what we have done before. And we don't even realize that there's no God sitting up there judging us. It's the God in us who are you just judging you. And what are you judging? You're judging those things that you planted over here. Just like my grandmother. She would plant some seeds in the garden. I should know about this. Plant those, those, that garden. And then she would walk through the garden judging whether or not this garden was going to make it, if these, oh, I'm going to have a good crop this year. Oh, this is going to be a good crop. Why? She was going through looking at the things she planted. But what have we done? We have forgotten that we judge those things back here. We forgot that we've done that. So when, we, when it mirrors and it comes back in the mirror and we're looking at it, we don't even remember that we did it. He said, because just break, I mean, Dr. Braden says, well, you know, I'm not this. So it wasn't the moment in the time that he was judging it. It was what he had done back here. Anybody want to add to, to that? I just, it, it just made me think about back when I was in church, when I was uh, in religion and practiced that doctrine. I, um, I just thought about how, you know, I would go on these cycles of, of judging someone or being jealous of someone or being envious of someone. And oh, God forgive me, you know, going back, asking for forgiveness, you know, oh, it happened again. Let me go ask for forgiveness again. And you're on the cycle, right? And I can only speak for myself. You know, there could be some people who are uh, in religion who are conscious enough, you know, to ask for forgiveness and also try to figure out why they feel that way. But the beauty and spirituality and examining yourself and looking for that thing within yourself is you do your work. You actually do your work and you find out why and you conquer that thing. And versus just continuing to ask for forgiveness over and over again, you go in and you do the work. So, yeah. I, I love that. I love that. Pastor Archie, what, you, what were you going to add to that? Yes, yeah, we on we, we on the same page this morning, my, my sister, sort of, kind of there. Uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I always go back to church, as you said, uh, we're quick to judge people uh, uh, based on uh, uh, how we receive things. And as I was saying earlier, but you, you got to know that a lot of times that things are reoccurring in your life is because you never learned the lesson. You didn't get the lesson. I, myself, I'm forgiven. And, and, and we always got to say, yeah, I'm going to forgive you, but I ain't going to never forget it. I ain't never forget it. You, you, you'll keep bringing it back up. You, you have not really let it go. You haven't learned the lesson. Uh, whatever the situation is, you, you, you hold on to it. You think that you have let it go. That's what I said last week. We got, I look in the mirror because people tell me sometimes, you know, my grandkids always call me the, the angry bird at times. And so I look in the mirror to see what is, is going on with me just by looking at my facial expression and, 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 and seeing if I'm treating people nasty or mean uh, because I'll be quick to say, no, I'm not no angry bird. I'm not mean, but there are things, as I've said time and time again, we are stressed because of some things we can't achieve that we want to achieve. We think we should be doing, but we always wind up going back doing the very thing, just like Paul said, it, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to go ahead, but every time I look around, I'm going the wrong way. You know, mm. the right way. You know what I'm saying? So we, 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 just don't see 
as, as uh, Anal said, um, Dr. Bray said, no, no, this is not me. But yes, you don't realize somewhere along the line you have judged someone or looked at someone in a certain way. It's to come back. Mm -hmm. Even though I may say, no, it's not me. But if I have looked at them the wrong way or said the wrong thing or thought the wrong thing or judged them the wrong way, it shows right back a reciprocity. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Archer. Love it. We're going to go to Tamisha and then we're going to go to Corey. Hmm. Okay, so I was pulling up the definition of judge. Good. And it's to form an opinion about or through careful weighing of evidence and testing of premises, all right? Mm -hmm. To form an opinion about through careful weighing of evidence and testing of premises. For me, and we're all able to share our own opinions here, right? Of course, absolutely. <laughs> so, and experiences. We have been taught to, through religion, um, right? Like you read the scripture, do not judge, let's be judged or something to that effect. That's really fighting against an innate natural part of us. Now hear me, and you can do your own reading and research and pray and meditate on this for yourself. But judging, the idea of judging is an innate quality in every being. That is something you cannot fight against. Ms. Kita, you were mentioning, uh, Ms. Kina, you were mentioning um, how you were constantly asking for forgiveness, constantly asking for forgiveness, right? Um, because this is a natural part of us that that's always going to come up. And by the, by that practice, you would always, you'll be asking for, we'll be asking for forgiveness for the rest of our lives on this planet. If we continue to try to fight against the natural part of ourselves. So because we all understand that um, God exists in us all, and God is the judge, then the God within you is judging, but AKA forming its opinion, okay? So when this judgment come up, comes up inside of you, it is your inner God that is judging. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. The issue with it though, is that there's misunderstanding about judgment, Okay, there's misunderstanding about what it is. That's why I just pulled up the definition because I wanted to see for myself, right? So judgment is forming an opinion, but the issue in, that I see in just us humans is that we've not been taught how to form opinions on truth, on true evidence, right? So Pastor Archie mentioned, we're so quick to judge. That's the issue. Judging is not the issue. Being quick to judge is the issue in my own personal experience, okay? Thank so you. without having gathered the evidence as to why, so you see somebody, you feel, oh, I feel this type of way, you know, about this or this person or this experience. Well, is it, you know, where's the evidence that you should feel intimidated by this person or be jealous of them? Where's the evidence that they are a threat to you? Is it really true? So asking yourself these, qu these questions before judgment to me is of a God nature. When you judge without any evidence at all, then that's of a nature that is very immature and out of alignment with, with the truth of God. And that's Thank what I'll you. say. Thank you, Tamisha. Now let's go to Corey and then we're gonna step back and, and, and uh, respond to Tamisha too, unless Corey's gonna get in there and talk about that. <laughs> um, good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning. I wanted I wanted to kind of add to it a little bit. Um, I just wanted to everybody to think about this too. Um, so when you look into a mirror, right? Like this, this, this is our literal for right now. So when you look into a mirror, typically what you see is uh, is uh, an image of what you kind of put into your head. You know, like uh, like uh, for example, when before I started going to the gym again, uh, I was uh, look I would look at myself every day and was like, yeah, I, I think I'm getting kind of big and buff or whatever you know but in reality the mirror is literally <laughs> literally uh how other people see you physically you know so and and to add to that as well it's like uh everybody um on this earth uh, us as human beings like uh, like Nancy said um uh, uh, a judge naturally you know especially because because human beings are very 
very uh, observant creatures. Like we see, we go off of what we see first. When you go into the mall, you ain't trying to meet everybody for the most part. You just, you, you going off of what you see. But people got to keep in mind too of how people, how people see you is where people are always, it's a, it's a natural thing. And I feel like people always want to be looked at as, as something, something worth looking at. Does that make sense? Like, like everybody wants to be viewed as something, something good or better or, or what, what, what have you. Um, that was pretty much it. That's, that's all I wanted to ask you. Like, uh, the, the mirror thing was, was, was really cool. I, I agree with everybody. Every, 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 ah, excuse me. I agree with everything that everyone said. That, that was really cool. <laughs> Thank you so much, Corey. I, 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 I feel you on that. I want to just step back for a second because, you know, um, when I also was looking at the definition for judge, and I'm so glad you brought that up to me, because the other one of the definitions for judge is also to infer, think, or hold as an opinion, as Tamisha already mentioned, uh, or to con, uh, conclude about or uh, have an assessment of. So when I'm talking about judging for me, my personal self, when I'm talking about judging, I have every right to judge myself. I do, I have every right to judge myself, but I do not have a right to judge Lavelle. I do not have a right to judge Ken. I have no right to judge other people because the moment I judge other people, because number one, we can't see the whole on what's happening on why this person is doing what they did. I can't see that this mother stole some milk out of the store because of her baby was hungry and she had no way, you know, and I'm not saying that stealing is the right thing to do, but the wrong thing for me to do is to judge her. So as long as I am judging myself about what it is that I'm doing and all of those things, then that's okay, but it's and, and it, but the moment I start to judge someone else, and I even can forgive myself, like you, like you were saying, Tina, you was asking for forgiveness. Well, I learned that I can forgive me. I can forgive me for the trespasses that I've made against someone else. But the the thing about it is, the moment I start judging somebody else, those things are going to show back up as a mirror, and that's what uh, Dr. Braden was talking about. Is that he? remember that in his life he had judged situations that he'd seen he looked at couples that were arguing and thought that man they just can't get along he 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 was um he uh thought that people when people weren't honest he was upset about that you know they should be telling it so all the things that he judged he seen not that he he never judged himself about that and see and i think that's what the scriptures uh, it's talking about judge not that she be not judged. Yes, Tamisha, I think you're right. I think it's very difficult. It's very difficult not to look at a situation and judge it. It is because we have been taught to do that. We have the judges in the court that's constantly judging people. So we in our we believe that the way forward is to judge things. But what I'm learning about me, and this is my personal opinion, this is what I'm learning is that I only want to judge me, my actions, not yours, Lavelle, not yours, Mark Thomas, not anybody else's, not even the things that I see, but to judge me. Uh, we have not heard from uh, my brother Lavelle today. Uh, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yes, and good morning, everyone. Uh, my contribution to the conversation is uh, something that uh, Pastor Archie touched on, and that is having to deal with reciprocity. Uh, probably uh, Dr. Braden went into the situation expecting, but not giving or not being developed enough to realize the people who he was in relationship with, regardless of what kind of relationship he was in with them, uh, what did they need out of that condition or that state? And that's when the reciprocity kicks in. And that's when you need to have agreement because there's either going to be agreement or there's going to be some level of disagreement. And when there's disagreement, then there's going to be some disharmony that's going to set the tone and that can cause a lot of uh, problems. 
So the mirroring effect bounces right back to him, of course. So we always need to understand when we enter into any type of relationship, what may be in the relationship that's needed from the other person and not what I just may think they need. So sometimes you have to ask some, you have to ask some questions. Gotcha. Thank you so much for that, Brother Lavelle. Uh, Pastor Archie, you have your hand up. Yeah, yes, my sister. That, that, uh, that, that's, that's great, uh, uh, Brother Russell. Um, I'm sitting here thinking. Now, I was a neighbor counselor. And what I had to do before I jump out there and judge someone, and I think someone has already said it, is take an assessment. I, I noticed if... I didn't get the person's record ahead of time and go through their record and look at everything that they've done. It would be crazy for me to jump up and, and because they come in my office and say, you know, I'm thinking about changing over to the nuclear field. Of course, we know to get into the nuclear field, you got to have some good scores some good math and, and the whole nine yards. But if I never, take an assessment of that person, I could, I would have a problem jumping out there and telling them that they can't do what they want to do. And I have never looked in their record to see what it is. Just as she was saying, you don't know why the mother stole the milk, even though you don't condone stealing, but you don't know why. So we have to take a deep assessment of what it is that we're judging and, and, and see, we can't do it if we quickly judge. That scripture was put there for a reason. It was put there for a reason. You can't, you can't, you just can't, you look at me and you say, oh, you know, look at that hat he got on. Uh, when he, who he think he is? He's a jiggle up? No, I like to wear hat. Right? No, this, <laughs> this, and this is one of my best wearing hats that I have. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying as an example, you know, you can't judge the book by its cover. You got to get into it and 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 and, and see what it is. I don't know about some of the, the, the brothers on here, how they were when they were teenagers coming up. You know, me, myself, you know, I, I see a pretty girl out there when I would come up, I say, whoo, boy, um, boy, I bet she'd be nice to be with. And you mess around. When you finally introduce yourself to her, she's a hell raiser. And, and, but she's pretty. And, fine, and and dainty, and you saying, oh my God, boy, I want that. I want her. But you don't realize what you're getting into because you never took the time to, <laughs> to know, get to know who this is. Yeah. That's right. That's right, Pastor Archer. And you know, and you just said something very uh clear there. Are we taking to taking the time to understand or consciously comprehend the mirrors or those people, those things that come in our circle. And most of the time, you know, uh, uh, Pastor Archie, and, and I think you said it too, Tamisha, is that, you know, you can't quickly judge. Well, you know, I can understand when you're taking an assessment of a person, you're going to dig down into that. How often do uh, are we taking the time to assess the person that's in front of us? We don't take that kind of time. Therefore, I don't know, for me, I don't want to put myself in the position of trying to judge it because I am not taking that time to assess it. Now, if that's something that, that, that comes before, when it comes before you, are you going to take the time? And this is the only thing we're saying here is, are you going to take the time to assess it, to see why it was there? We don't consider why that thing was brought in right. front of us. That's what I'm saying. Tamisha. Mm -hmm. Right. So just going back to the definition of judge, meaning forming, forming opinions, um, you know, there, there's just, there is just an emotional immaturity when we, when we think about judge, because like you said, we think of judges in the courthouse and when we hear judge, we automatically, our minds automatically say either you're guilty or you're innocent in our own personal lives, either you're guilty or you're innocent, but every, everything has its place. Even judgment, once we, you know, get mature on what judgment actually is, gain some emotional intelligence about what it is and why God um, allow, the, our, allow us to have opinions, right? 
we have to get mature about what judgment is and how to use it, how to, how to activate judgment. Judgment is, is in place as a life or death situation, not for, um, oh, you know, I just don't like you, period. So I'm just going to judge you. You know, I'm going to judge you based on the fact that you're, that you're black, that you're white, that you're tall, that you're short, that you're, that you weigh this much. Okay. I'm just going to judge. It's, 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 it, it really doesn't serve a purpose for you. You're not using the power of judgment or we, we don't use the power of judgment wisely when you do it this way. It gets, it's, it's giving you nothing, right? So if you're going to access this idea of opinion that God allowed us all to have, let it be worth your time, okay? The idea of judgment or forming an opinion it's really only supposed to be activated when you are accessing whether or not this person is safe for you or this place or this, these people is safe for you. That's the only time you activate the power of judgment. That's right. And, you, and even at that, I'm sorry, Misha, go ahead. Is it safe for me to be here? Is it safe for us to, for, for me to make you a friend and you to make me a friend? right? I'm forming my, my opinions naturally. And then also just on a scientific level, and I know Mr. Greg Braden is, is, is big on science, but he will probably talk about the coherence of the brain and how it works. The brain is going to do what it does, which is to categorize people, places, and things. And this is what the brain does to save your life. It, this is what it does to try to, it does its best to try to protect you, right? But the soul within you needs to work hand in hand with your brain doing this. So we, you know, we really need to develop some maturity. There is absolutely nothing wrong with judgment. No, there's not. The issue is gaining emotional intelligence about what judgment is and how to actually use it to save your life. And if you're using judgment to judge other people just based on what, they, what they're wearing or what they look like, then that is disappointing for all of human race. That that is as far as we can go. That's as far as we've gotten in, in understanding judgment. Either you're guilty or you're innocent, or I just don't like what you're wearing or what you look like. It is the lowest form and it's it's immature. Absolutely. So. It is a, you're absolutely right. It is the lowest form. And now, Pastor Archie, I know you said something in the comments and I'll let you uh, talk about that in a second. I only thing I want us to remember is that whatever we judge, we will see again. So if I'm riding down the road and I see someone riding and walking on the street, I am not going to pick that person up and put them in my car. I've done that before and that wasn't a good thing. You know, nothing happened, thank God, but still don't do that. So what I'm saying is for me, I judged, I didn't judge what that person looked like, who they were. I made a decision. I made a decision that I'm not picking up people and putting them in my car when I don't know them. So that I didn't judge that person. I wanted to be safe for myself. And that's what I did. I made a decision based on what I understand can happen in the world and not judging the person for any other reason or for no reason at all. I made a decision. And that's what I think we have to be clear. Is it a decision based on my safety that I'm making for me? Or am I judging this person and not picking them up because of the way they look. Because if I, would I pick up a person who was in a nice suit and all this kind of stuff because they look good? No, I wouldn't do that because I've made a decision. I'm not picking up a person at all. And so let's, let's, let's make sure that we are clear on judging another person and the decisions we make for ourselves. There's again, there's nothing wrong with it to me, my personal opinion, making the decisions for yourself, but not for someone else. And Pina, I see that your hand is up. Yes, I'm just so enjoying the conversation, and I think it's going to be really uh, a blessing, very beneficial to your to SRC audience. And, and I'll just speak for my for myself personally and my experience as I grew spiritually and as I came out of religion and really took that one scripture from the Bible, Luke 17, 21. I took that one scripture with me as I went along my way, you know, and and ventured to get to know myself, like. Um, 
I began to realize that a lot of those things that I classified as judgments was really me getting to know who I was and a part of my gift. Because I think a lot of times, I know I'm not the only one, you may feel like you're judging someone, but it's actually the spirit of discernment, which we all have. We all have that gift to be able mm-hmm. to discern a thing. So I found that years later, looking back over some of those things that I thought were judgments and they were actually spirits showing me things in other people (laughs) for what reason maybe maybe to pray for that person maybe to um also always to recognize that hey you know that thing is in you too you have some work to do within yourself with that thing whatever that thing was that that moved me or shook me or, or or irritated me it was an opportunity for me to say hey you know why is God revealing this to me what is this about you know learning about your gift learning that we all have the uh, gift of discernment, how to use it, what it's there for, and just continue to look within. I'm just, I'm not going to go because I just keep babbling. I'm just really (laughs) excited. I'm just, I'm super excited about this conversation. This is, this is great. Um, We have a hand up, Kashina. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am enjoying this conversation. Sorry I came in a little late, but I caught the best part of it. (laughs) But I want to go back because you guys are telling me something about myself. So I had to kind of like I had to weigh in because there was a situation where um, before COVID, we had our little potlucks. I think I used to tell you all all the time. We just have these different potlucks and people were bringing different things. And this particular young lady would bring in breakfast all the time. And she would do her egg casserole with sausage and everything else. So, you know me, I'm going to look at if you clean, if you wash your hands when you come out of the bathroom, you know, again, judging. But it's one, one particular day, um, you know, she was kind of new to the, to, to the party. And she brought in this casserole. And the first thing I saw was these real dirty nails, what it looked to me like dirty nails. And she's trying to feed us this casserole, but your hands are dirty. I'm d- I know that's judging, Lord, but she had dirty nails. And the first thing I saw, didn't see who she was, didn't know <laughs> anything about her, but I saw the dirty nails and instantly I go, oh no, no ma'am, Mm-mm. I, I can't do it. And on down the line, I missed out on a casserole. I didn't eat it. I refused. I was watching everybody else eating this, just looking disgusted. As the months and past of the years passed on, I kind of find out that she had a certain condition. And the condition was causing the dark nails and what have you on her. And I didn't know this. And every when y'all said they just brought back that moment of I wish that I was, you know, well, I couldn't say nothing to her about it, but. The thing is, I felt really bad because after I found out that she had a certain condition that changed the color of her skin, that made her have the dark nails and stuff, it wasn't that she wasn't clean. It was that because of that reason. And because I judged before even knowing who she was, I missed out on some food, or some really good food. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Christina. And, so, and that, yeah. I think that one of the things that uh, Kina just said, that's, that's, that was wisdom. But at the same time, you were judging. Keep going, Kashina. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, I was saying, like you were stating, you know, you got to look at it. Is it good for me? Is it a wise choice? Or am I really judging? I think I was kind of doing both. So that, that says a lot. And it makes me kind of like now on to kind of like look at the situation as a whole. Don't look at just the picture that I see, like or say in the mirror of what I see find out who are, who that person is, what that person is all about before you judge. So I, I like that. I like that. All right. Thank you so much, Kashina. Tamisha. And that's the good? goal. That's the goal, uh, Kashina, is, is this is what we do to evolve. We, once you, you I mean, you evaluate, evaluated that now, you, you checked yourself. That's what we do. We check ourselves once we notice something. And that's the idea. That's the goal. Kudos. I wish I had a bell to ring for you <laughs> because that's winning. That's winning at that point. Um, but just going back on, in some very you know extreme cases, you would have certain people who would have saw the woman's nails and then spread rumors about the woman based on their judgment without mm-hmm. having done any assessment, right? Mm-hmm. So it, you know, and I can say this only from personal experience that it's happened, right? So it's like, oh, you know, don't, don't, don't eat her food because, you know, so now it's going around the office, but nobody eat the food and the woman's wondering, 
no one touching what? my head. What the hell casserole still here? What? Yeah, sure. no one's talking. Everybody's looking at you funny. You, you're trying to figure out what's going on. And it was a rumor that was spread based on a judgment that had not, that hadn't had any previous success in it. Mm -hmm. So those are the worst case scenarios. But um, but I think it's, it's definitely the goal that you that you check yourself. Great. Thank you so much for that, uh, Tamisha and Kashina for, for, for your remarks. Mark Thomas. Yeah, just one little thing on that is that I'm getting back to the scripture that we read right at the beginning of the show, uh, where it says, uh, why beholdest thou mote in thy brother's eye? Beholdest means you're looking, you're looking for things in your brother to judge, right? So, and that's what Tamisha was alluding to is that, you know, we need to think about why are, why are we looking for things when, when there's so much that we need to look at ourselves about that's, that's all. right well and you know when you when you and when you think about the mirror this is what we i, th I think this is what the, the point that we are trying to bring home today and i think everybody's hitting on that that making that hitting, hitting this home today is that when someone comes into your circle when you meet that person that, that thing happens are we taking the time to assess it that's all are we taking the time to look at why is this person here? Why not, not, oh Lord, why is this happening to me? But actually thinking about why this thing is happening, going back and saying, have I been, have I been judging people? That's what Dr. Braden did. Have I been judging people? Have I been not trusting people? You know, what is it? Not that you just trust everybody, but you, but you judge yourself about what you see in front of you every time. And I, I think that is, so important because the scripture does say, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And what and with what measure you meet, which means how much you send out, is you're going to be measured to you again. So people in, in our religion taught us that when we did that, oh, we're going to be hit over the head and bad things are going to happen to us. That was not what it was talking about. What it was talking about when it says it shall be measured to you again that means you're going to see it again. This person is going to, you're going to meet a person that's just like what you've been doing before, or you're going to encounter this thing that, um, that you've been judging, this thing you've been judging. Like, let me just give this example. 9-11 brought a lot of fear, didn't it? Everybody was fear, went into this whole fear mode. We went into a, a war, Corey. You know, you've been in the military. Archie, you've been in the military. We went into a war because of the fear of 9-11. And that fear of 9-11 has expanded, just like our universe is continuing to expand. That fear has continued to grow and grow and grow to where is it now? We're even fearing each other so much to the point that we don't trust each other because of our skin color and on and on and on. So what I'm saying is when we judge a situation, allow something like that to a thing like 9-11 to continue that we focusing on, everybody's talking about it, guess what it does? Just like the universe, it expands. Um, okay, so with that being said, you know, when you think about, was it talking about, um, what it was telling us is that when we do these things, we're gonna see it again, but we don't remember that we said, that's, that's the point I think that we were trying to get through out this 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 whole series here and i and i think everybody's touched on it but so let me ask you this question when we talk about uh communication or communicate what is what what is it saying when it's talking about communicate because to judge doesn't mean that we have to actually say something out of our mouth does it like we got to speak the words because judging it means to communicate is to connect with someone Communicate is to disclose, uh, to reveal, or to convey is also to, to communicate. So we don't have to actually, I don't have to go tell Tamisha about something that I've seen that I'm trying to, that I'm judging, or I don't have to open my mouth and judge it. I can just think it. I can just say, you know what? That's a shame and a pity that that, that, that girl eating all that food and she da 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 da. I'm judging her. I'm judging her. So Judgment doesn't mean that you only thing that you're doing is speaking, that you're just saying it, telling a friend, telling somebody else. It means that too. But judgment also can be to communicate something just by 
your thoughts. And like everybody's not maybe not talking about what happened in 911, but we're thinking, you know, we got to be careful. We got to look at this person. If they have on a turban or something, maybe they might be a terrorist or something like that. So communication is not necessarily um, verbally talking. It also is thinking a thing. So do we really need to speak to communicate those things or do we need to speak to be judging people? <laughs> I, I, tell you, I tell you what, um, I, I'm just thinking back to what someone had just said, I, I, I believe back here about how, uh, I think, yeah, Kashino was talking about that food uh, and she could have went around and told everyone about how the girls, her nails look. But then again, uh, another way, like you said, none, uh, she didn't communicate it, uh, but she, she cut herself off. Now, there are instances where we're in settings where you don't know when you've broken that rule, uh, that, 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 that secret code, and everybody started treating you bad. Everybody's treating you bad, but you don't know why they're treating you bad, but that you have done something that the group that you're in, uh, they know about it. They know the code. They know that uh, uh, maybe you wore something that everyone looks down on or whatever the case may be. But there are secret little codes. And, and then even in churches, in churches too, you, you don't know who to, you, you don't know what you did wrong, but everybody is, is looking at you the wrong way because they're, they're secret codes. They're, they're, you don't know them and they ain't told them to you yet, I guess, because you ain't been in there long enough, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're there, they're, they're there. And so it ain't always somebody coming there and say, oh, it, it, what you wait at the church for? No, them, them, not, I, right. all, okay. all churches are not the same, but you know, you find a group in there that, that has those codes themselves and you don't know that you are broken them until you know, someone that's right. is treating you wrong. That's the that's the, that's the, and that's what we call those norms that you don't know that they exist until you break one of them. Um, Corey has his hand up, and then we're gonna get ready to uh, finalize. Um, to answer your question, uh, I feel like um, in my well, I don't. I feel like you don't have to uh, say anything to judge anybody. Nine times out of ten, when you're in a public setting, um, you. You just think it in your head or or you might give your, your partner or your friend a, a certain look or whatever the case may be. I feel like uh, what's what's there sometimes is 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 just understood and doesn't need to be said. Um, uh, but it, I mean, if you were to say something very, you know, uh, say something to where somebody would know, known that, ah, known that they were being judged. Uh, I feel like uh, the there might be a little backlash to that versus you saying it in your head. That's, that's all I want to say. Thank you so much, Corey. With that, we're going we're gonna to take this round robin, but um, the, the key here is, guys, is that we need to, in my opinion, in my, for my personal self, is I want to watch those mirrors. I want to, when something comes into my circle, I want to really take a look at it and understand, is it there to teach me something about myself? Is it there, as Tina said, that's something I might need to be aware of? But most of the time, because what we say, remember that uh, from um, the uh, book of Thomas, it says, recognize what is in your sight. So recognize is to look, to really take, pay attention to that thing that came in your sight. Then it says, and that which is hidden from you, because remember, our egos hide a lot of stuff because it's emotional and it's, you know, it's, it's, it wants to survive. So it's going to hide stuff. It's going to, you know, give you past memories. And so you may not see it unless you really, really want to see it. But it says when you recognize what is in your sight and that which is hidden from you will become plain to you. That's what was said. So if we really want to see and understand and learn in this bubble, this earthly realm that we're in, that we really want to pay attention to what uh, we see, what is in front of us, then it will be plain. What I've learned in focusing, the more I look at a thing, the more I see what that thing is. And that's the only thing, that's what, that's what we wanted to 
to get, that's what I want to leave our, our audience with today. But we're going to go around Robin, LaVera, Rosser, Brother Rosser, what would you like to leave the audience with today? Oh, okay. Uh, I'd just like to lead the conversation uh, with uh, an old saying that a lot of the elders in my family would teach us, is it better to give than receive? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Woo, we could spend some time on that one. <laughs> Thank you for that, brother. Uh, uh, Kena. <laughs> I would just like to... Um, Again, thank you, uh, Nala, for the invitation to be here. And it's just a great conversation. And this is really key when you talk about human connectivity and us coming together as humanity. This is like just beautiful, right? Because as we recognize um, ourselves and each other, right, we have the opportunity to move past those uh, times that we're quick to judge. Understand, uh, like Tamisha shared, uh, uh, judgment is a natural part of ourselves, right? Sometimes, you know, we don't want to judge, but it, it pops up. Why? It is there for a reason. It's actually a tool for you to use to learn more about yourself and learn more about your brother, learn more about your gifts, right? Is it judgment? Is it discernment? What is it? Why is it being shown to you? It's being shown to you for a reason. Um, so I just, I just, I'm excited about that. And I just will leave uh, the audience with uh, every encounter and experience that you have in life. Uh, look at it as an opportunity for you to learn more about yourself more about your, your brothers and sisters, more about your gift, and more about your purpose. Ooh, love that. Thank you. Tamisha Burgess, what are you leaving the audience with today? Thank you, Ms. Kina. Um, nothing wrong with judgment. There's only an issue with judgment when you haven't developed the emotional intelligence to use it wisely. Yes, Ms. Kina. It is there for a reason, but you have to have done the work on yourself from within to understand that when judgment comes up, what you're supposed to be using it for. Life mm. and death only. Your brain is categorizing or trying to categorize what works and does not work as a result of life or death. Your brain is trying to categorize what works and does not work as it relates to the world around you, how to be better, how to become and not just become, but unbecome what does not work for you and your tribe. Um, judgment is only there as a foundation, as a means, as a tool to build a better world, um, to build yourself and those around you that you love. Judgment has nothing to do with um, hmm, frivolous things. It has nothing to do with what a person looks like or what they're wearing. Um, when you use judgment in this way, it should be a mirror reflection to you about you about where you are not and the work you still need to do on yourself. Very good, Tamisha. Love that. Corey, Ooh, what are you going to leave my audience with? Um, I feel like the panel, the panel kind of said everything. Uh, I, I agree 100%. Um, uh, judgment is definitely a tool used to, to kind of, when used correctly, is something that you, that, that you can use to help yourself and other people around you. So I really think that was really, this was a really good lesson. It was a really cool one. Um, um, uh, don't be afraid of uh, judgment, but at the same time, just, just be aware of how judgment can be used correctly. Ooh, I love that, Corey. Thank you. That was very good. Uh, now we're going to go to Pastor Archie. And what are you going to leave the audience with? Well, I tell you, <laughs> in, a, in a church said, now I, I would say that you may be seen for, for those who have already spoken so that everybody can remember what was said. I don't, <laughs> that's a lot of good things that has been uh, spoken here today. And uh, I believe um, always be conscious of what is around you and who is around you. And I say that because it's based on what you've been meditating on and what you want in your life. Sometimes we, because something looks like it's a snake, you forgot all about that you had a lot of mice that you needed to get rid of, and the <laughs> snake come to get rid of them, and here you are running the snake down, trying to kill the snake. That's what I want. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I 
love that. I absolutely love that. You're absolutely right. And see, we're judging it because it's a snake, but it's there to help us. But we don't take the time to assess all of that. I just love that, Pastor Archie. That was very, 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 very good. And guys, please don't forget the, the, the scriptures, too, that uh, uh, Mark Thomas read about every idle word that men shall speak. And re remember, you know, speaking is not necessarily speaking out of your mouth. It might be those things you're thinking or, or, or chasing away those uh, snakes, Archie, when they're there to really demise you judging improperly. So um, now let's go to Mark Thomas, what you're going to leave our audience with and take us on out because we are way over time. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> I mean, that's that's okay. a, it was a great conversation today. It was. It's great. Um, yeah, I would just leave the audience with a with a simple message that kind of echoes what Lavelle has told us many times that we are powerful beings and that, uh, you know, to think positively. And uh, and I also, you know, I really do uh, agree with Tamisha in that in that we we naturally as people we judge. But, you know, you can judge positively. You, you, can't, you don't have to. I mean, judgment doesn't mean a negative thing all the time. It can absolutely be a positive thing, and that's what then that's what manifests in our lives when we do something like that, you know. So that's all I got. We're gonna close the show up. Let me just scroll down here to where I need to be. All right, all of us here with SRC, we want to thank the audience for attending today's presentation. We really appreciate your patronage, and uh, encourage you to email us your questions or comments at shiftingreligiousconcepts at gmail.com. And don't forget, this presentation will be available very soon. Uh, even if you attended today's program, uh, please go to Shifting Religious Concepts channel and give us a thumbs up. It's one of the few ways we get public attention. It does help our mission. Uh, so if you're not subscribed uh, to our newsletter, go to shiftingreligiousconcepts.com forward slash registration and join us. So we're going to take uh, next week off. Uh, and then we're going to regroup again on Sunday, March 6th at 10 o'clock as usual. Uh, just, just as a programming note for everybody, uh, I think going forward, we're, we pretty much decided that we're going to take the final Sunday in each month off. And uh, so like three out of four, or however it works out, I'm, I'm sure some months have less than four Sundays, but however it works out the last Sunday in every month, we will be taking off. So that's just a small note there. Um, so, uh, okay, it's been a great show. Lo loved it, everybody, really good. Applause to everybody. Uh, we wish you all, as always, peace, health, wisdom, and love, of course. <laughs>